Coach Mike Kelly has every reason to be a happy man. His flyers, it seems, are flying. The perennial Division III powerhouse from Dayton finds itself ending the decade the same way it started the decade, fighting it out for the national title. The results, it hopes, will be the same. If it is, there'll be joy in middle America. But standing in the Flyers' way is another team that's been down this path before, the Union College Dutchman. Two teams that are mirror images of one another, right up to and including an unblemished record. Dayton has won 12 games with only a tie to mar perfection. Union has been perfect. 13 wins without a loss. And now, it's down to this. Now we get the chance. Now you get the chance to play for the big All the marbles, baby! We're gonna play for all the marbles! It's the 1989 NCAA Division III Football Championship game. Today's game is brought to you by Rawlings Sporting Goods Company, maker of the official ball of NCAA football championships. By Remington Microscreen Shavers. By Isotoner Gloves for men, the perfect gift because they're the perfect fit. And by Pizza Hut, home of pan pizza that's winning the hearts of America. City, Alabama plays host to a team from Ohio and a team from New York. It's the Dayton Flyers and the Union Dutchman in the Division III football championship game on a brisk afternoon here just across the Georgia border. Just about set to get underway here in Phoenix City at Garrett Stadium. The Union Dutchman will be the first team to take the field. 13-0 are the Dutchman coming off a very tough win over Ferrum. Ferrum, many people felt, was the best team in Division III football, but it all comes down to these two. Here come the Dutchman. And the other side of this football coin on this Saturday in Alabama, the Dayton Flyers. They are 12-0 with a tie to Butler, but that was an away game against the Division II team. A very tough schedule being played by the Dayton Flyers, and they came through it unscathed. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with Stan White. And Stan, you just have the feeling this is what college football is all about. Two undefeated teams playing for a national championship. You hear about the divisions in college football. One double A, two, three. If you ever thought about watching a Division three football game, this is the one to the see. Two undefeated teams, a national championship on the line. The second and third percentage-wise, most successful coaches in this division active right now. This is a game what football is all about. And teams that both get it done in very similar fashion, as a matter of fact, Union does it perhaps with a little more glitz. Dayton, they're a little bit more vanilla, but they both have a pretty good running back to get them started. They're both keyed by their running game. For Union, it's big, and I mean big, Ryan Mason. 6'2", 230 pounds, and Barry, he's bigger than anybody on the front seven of Dayton's defense. He's had almost 1,500 yards. That's over 100 yards per game, and they used a lot of tailbacks at Union. He's going to see the ball a lot today, especially under the conditions that we have here. Dayton gets it done with a running back also, but considerably different in size. Well, they have a Mutt and Jeff running attack. 5'8", 160-pound Rob Manette. And if he is that big, we'll have to see, really, because they always exaggerate that size. But he's a guy that can really cut. He has a foot problem, which may inhibit him a little bit, and that may be a problem for Dayton today. The big guy is Kevin Hoffaker, 6'215", pounds, and he's run for 26 touchdowns. So they get inside the 10, inside the 20, really, they've been very successful, but set, especially inside the 10, they give the ball to Hoffaker, and he gets it into the end zone. You don't often think of Phoenix City, Alabama, as being a place for a weather game, and yet we got the top coats on. It's going to be a little bit brisk out there. Well, it's not real warm today, 38 degrees, but also we've had a lot of rain the last couple days. I walked on the field before the game, and the field was firm. It was good. We see a chance of rain today, but I think it's going to hold off, and if it does, the field should hold up, Barry. And it looks like Union has won the toss and will receive the opening kickoff, so Union will have the ball first. Dayton actually won the toss and deferred the choice to the second half. In any case, Union, as you look at their coaching staff, and these are two very successful coaches. Mike Kelly on one sideline, Al Baggini on the other sideline. 
These are two guys who know how to win football games. It is just that simple. Weather incidentally has cleared up a little bit, Stan. You talked about the fact that we really did have inclement conditions all day yesterday, all night last night, but right now it's as good as it's been since we've been here. It really has. We've had almost monsoonish weather, and uh, it really has cleared up overnight. And as I said, the field was real firm and it should be good for both the running games. Burns will kick it off. And the deep men, Telemach and Tolman. Telemach to the right and Tolman to the left for Union. Twisting kick, short kick. Tolman at the 12-yard line. 20-25 to the 30, and good field position to start things at the 32-yard line. Let's take a look at the offense for Union. Brett Russ, the quarterback, he's a guy who is getting better with every outing. The running backs, Ryan Mason, and he is the man of whom Stan White spoke, and Tom Lombardoni is the fullback. Callahan and Ahern will be the wide receivers. Ahern the best of the two. Mario DiLoretto comes off perhaps a career game for him. Riccardi starts at center, an important position in any offensive team. There is a look at the tackles. Evans and Priore. And we start now. Three wideouts, one setback. Short drop. They'll put it up on first down. The pass is good to Mark Callahan and out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Let's take a look at the defense for the Dayton Flyers and it is a good defense. Bob Leonard, the start at middle guard. Lancar might be the best. Steve Willowit is the other tackle. Mocho and Rastetter will be the defensive ends. They're really linebackers. They'll play in an up position. John Husted, a good one with Bruce Boxley at the corners. Cuthbert and Kennelly, who is a big play guy at the free safety. You're gonna see a lot of Kennelly today. Second down, about two and a half. Mason in motion. Give it to the fullback this time. Straight ahead, Lombardoni, first down. Well, Barry, you can see for the first uh, couple plays the type of offense that Union runs. A lot of shifting, a lot of motion, a lot of formations, but really they come back to very basic running plays. It's almost like the Dallas Cowboys used to be with all their shifts and all their motions, but basic running plays. Yeah, it's interesting. We talked about Dayton being vanilla. This team's a banana split, but they get it done the same way. This is Mason for the first time today running right by people to the 45 yard line of Dayton, a gain of nine. Sean Kennelly on the tackle. As you can see, the backside, the whole backside line is lined up a little deeper on this play so they can pull. You can see it from the side. You see that this is a crisscross play. I love the Washington Redskins, a counter tray type play. You give it to the big back, hits the hole, and gets good yardage. He'll break a lot of tackles because of his size. This time they come with the trips right. They do give you an awful lot of different looks. Play fake to throw. And it is incomplete this time. Actually went between two receivers. I'm not exactly sure who he was throwing to. It could have been Eugene Ray. Could have been Lombardini. We like to mix in. A nice play. Second and real short yardage. They figure they have a waist down. Try to fool them on play action. Get somebody wide open and get a big play. Feeling now they can come back on third down with their good rushing attack. Their big back and get the first down. Third down and short. And in short yardage, as you see, they will go out of the wishbone. And the give this time is to Lombardoni. First down and much more to the 35, inside the 35, to the 33-yard line. Cuthbert with what might have been a saving tackle. One of, the, one of the big things we have to watch is the line play. As we see the ISO of the backs off the wishbone, the lead block by Mason. Again, 230 pounds as a lead blocker is good, especially at Division Three. And Lombardoni just follows the big man through the hole. He took Canelli about five yards downfield with that block. Callahan comes in motion this time. Pitch to Mason. 35 to about the 31-yard line, a gain of about three. Dayton is a team that plays a base 50 defense or a 5-2 Oklahoma, a lot of names for it. 34 they call it in pro football. But they usually slant a lot. But they felt they wouldn't slant near as much today because of all the different formations and motions that Union uses. It was Mike Kelly's idea. He's a defensive coordinator also, calls the defenses. 
So they wouldn't be slanting the wrong way. Mike Kelly said a lot of decisions will have to be made after the first series. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Fumble on the snap. And Russ falls on it. Ball a little wet. We may see a few of those today, but I really think that Union is a team that can overcome a mistake like that a lot easier than Dayton, because Union has been a lot more successful with their passing game than Dayton has. So you can see the snap come up. Really never gets it. Does a smart thing and just falls on the ball, knowing now he has another down, and their passing attack has been successful, especially in the playoffs, to make their first down. This time they bring Mason up on the wing. Lombardoni is the lone setback. Straight back to pass as Russ under pressure throws caught by the tight end that time Mario Di Loretto it'll be short of the first down about a yard. Di Loretto had 10 catches last week 20 for the three playoff games. He's the guy they say there's three guys on their offense that really key this Mason Russ the quarterback in Mario Di Loretto the tight end 6'1 225 pounds watch him just shove off the linebacker uses his size to open it up for him. Breaks a tackle, but gets a big hit as he turns around, but holds on to the football and gets close to the first first down area. They'll measure for it, but I'm quite certain it's short of the first down. See, Russ gets a little uh, hit after the ball after the ball had been released, but it caused him to throw it early. But because De Loretto had the size to get open, the ball was uh, on target. About six inches, and they will go on fourth down. The ball inside the 25-yard line at about the 24. Barry, we saw the wishbone almost break a big play last time. They mix it up, go one side to the other, and it's real capable once they get through the line. As you see, all the defenders at the line of scrimmage, if they break it, it could go all the way. McLaughlin at the fullback spot with Lombardoni and Mason, and this is Mason, first down, slips a tackle, 20, 15, 10. You're a psychic, Stan. Husted saved a touchdown. I think he may have grabbed the face mask to bring the big man down. I know defensively, anytime you have a problem with a big guy, you just grab onto anything you can get. And sometimes it is that face mask. Better than letting him break another tackle and going into the end zone. So that'll be halfway, and it'll take it inside the five-yard line for Union. Very impressive first drive. They have that size advantage on the line. You can see the he just breaks the tackle, cuts to the outside. Now watch him break the tackle right at the line of scrimmage by Randy Robinson. And it gets downfield and not a bad idea. He's not going to bring him down if he doesn't grab onto that face mask in that jersey. He does get him down. They go out of the eye formation for the first time. We won't see them in that set too much. Russ gives to Mason inside. He's close. The eye formation is a quick count offense for them. You see them line up in that. It's usually on the first sound, trying to catch the defense off guard, waiting for shifts. And then they give it to the big guy behind the fullback. He's almost to the end zone. Willow with the first man to him. Ryan, though, turned him around and kept him out of the end zone. And again, they go with a wishbone. Mason. Touchdown. was no nonsense that was straight down the field power football just a few play actions put in there the big play though was the third down and 10 when they got the ball to De Loretto just short of the first down but that kept the drive alive Scott Goodwin will try the point he's the backup quarterback don't often find quarterbacks doing place kicking but well, interesting story their regular kicker transferred to SMU just before the season started Straight ahead kicker, gets it up, and makes it good. 10 minutes and 48 seconds remaining to be played in the first period, and Union, without letting Dayton touch the football, has jumped on top by a seven to nothing count. Time out on the field, seven to nothing, Union. Well, there is a look at the guy who really you mentioned as being the guy who gets the job done, and he got it done on the first drive, Stan. And we'll see a lot of him today. It's even tougher to tackle because of the wetness of the field, and everybody gets a little damp, and you'll sort of slide off the big guy. If you can't wrap him up, you can't grab on. He's going to have a big day today. A couple of big plays on short yardage situations, too, and that really 
made it a little bit easier for Union. So Union now leading seven to nothing to kick it away for to Dayton. Dayton will have it for the first time. Goodwin will kick it off. Husted is the deep man. Short kick, very short kick. And this one hits dead and goes down at the 25 yard line. All worked out pretty well, but it wasn't very pretty. Let's take a look at the Dayton Flyers and how they line up offensively. Here's a guy, blue collar guy at quarterback, just gets it done. Manette playing on a bad ankle. Hoffaker, he's the guy to look for inside the 20 yard line. Franks and Saunders will be the wide outs. They don't score a lot, but they'll catch a lot of balls. Bob Keller will catch a lot of balls from the tight end spot also. Pellegrino, first year freshman, played every game, started every game. Harder and DiGiacomo, DiGiacomo playing on a sore wheel also. First snap, and straight ahead, nothing doing. Hoffaker was the ball carrier, and he ran into a union defense that looks like this. Bill Smith on the nose out of Ansonia, Connecticut. Faria and Grosbeck with Deacons and Hallis, the man who made the tackle on that last play. McMahon and Riglietti will be the inside linebackers. Tryon and Werdan, the cornerbacks. Anderson and Kemsky, the safeties. Slot left on second down. Back to pass, Charlie. A lot of time, waits for traffic over the middle and good to Cameron. Check the receiver on that. It was Franks, not Cameron. Hallis and McMahon run him down. Very short range passing game for Dayton Barry. They like the little crossing patterns. They like the little stops and the outs. As you can see the tight end will clear out, take the linebackers deep, and the wide receiver comes all the way across underneath to get good yardage, just short of the first down. But that's also an easy throw, one for confidence. Short yardage, and they go with the full house backfield. And the give straight ahead and diving in there for the first down, Hoffaker. Got to remember, Dayton is very close to Columbus, and uh, a lot of these coaches grew up under the days of Woody Hayes, who my old coach at Ohio State. I was just going to say, you know all about saw that. Saw a lot of that. They call Woody called that robust formation: three backs and the fullback one way or the other. And they do have an option and a play-action pass off that series, and uh, we'll see it before the day's over. Both these teams, incidentally, very young. Dayton with only four seniors in the starting 22, offensively and defensively. Here's a short drop and a pass to Franks at the 40-yard line. Turns it upfield, out of bounds, just short of the 45. A gain of about eight. Dayton's a team, as I said, likes the underneath passing game, and they like to throw on first down, some on second. They hate to get into a passing situation on third down when the other team can really cut loose, play pass defense, and rush the passer. Then you might see some swings and draws for them because they don't do well in those situations. They'll go out of the eye formation this time. Manette the tailback, yet to carry the ball for the first time. Second down and about two. Here's Manette, left side, tries to get outside, run down nicely by Kepsky from a safety spot. Both coaches we talked to felt Dayton's, Dayton felt it was very imperative they do get outside and Union that they not let them get outside. You see Manette, he makes the cut there, but he ends up going east and west completely. He's got to make the cut and then get back forward. So you can see that's a big play for the Union's defense because they know this isn't a passing team. Here's where you like to see the screen and draw. Bro. They wanted very important the Union felt to get them into predictable passing situations and that's what they're in right now. Third and six. They come with a blitz from the outside and down he goes at the 33 yard line. They should have went with the draw. Yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Faria was the man who made the tackle, but they came with an outside blitz that time. Well, they do. They come in with their nickel package. They substitute. They have five or six defensive backs, and they bring them from all angles. You so see the replay here, Barry. See everybody coming. You see the defensive back numbers coming. Just not enough people to pick up out of the spread formation. That's why they don't like the third and long situations. Giamo will be the deep man to return this punt. Short kick, Giamo comes up the 30 yard line at the 35 and down at the 36 yard line. So a short punt, short return, but good field position for Union. Time out on the field, look at the scoreboard. Union seven, Dayton nothing. Marched right down the field the first time they had it. 
Slot left on first down. Long count by Russ. Lombardoni in motion. Mason gets the call. Nothing doing. Long car made the stop. And the first time they've really been able to contain Mason. Barry, you see that Dayton is a team, a fundamental team that likes to start fast. It's imperative for them to stay ahead. And only 12 touchdowns in the first quarter over 80 some games. And right now, Union's already got one and uh, in position, good field position to get another. See a little uh, repair work being done on the sideline. Being done to Scott Alexander, backup fullback. Trips left on this set, and now they bring a man in motion. Straight back, Russ. A lot of time throws underneath. Ball is good this time to the tight end, De Loretto. Flag is down. Flag is down in the backfield. And that is the area of holding, but it is going to go against Union. Union players were applauding. I thought maybe they were <laughs> thinking it was against Dayton. Now, when you see that flag dropped back around the pocket, unless one of the offensive linemen or defensive linemen has grabbed a face mask of an offensive lineman, then the other 100% of the time, it's offensive holding. See if we can pick it up. The holding. See, we'll see the guy draw the flag. Uh, where is the holding? Right there, right on the outside. We just see the flag come. Again, De Loretto on a another catch on a delay pallet pattern. Al Bagnoli, I'm sure concerned about this situation. Second and 20. It's interesting that Dayton did play a tougher schedule, but Union coming off a win, as we mentioned, against Ferrum, a team that everybody thought was the toughest team in the division. This pass is good to De Loretto to the 39-yard line. And that got back the holding penalty plus about two. De Loretto has really come on in the playoffs. We mentioned earlier 19 catches on the season. He's had 20 in the playoffs. I guess big time players really come on in big games and that's what De Loretto has. Just a nice simple seam pattern makes the catch and gets some yardage. They bring Gene Ray all the way over by his lonesome to the left side. Straight back again Russ airs it out. And I think Ray that time was thinking in and Russ was thinking out. They caught man coverage, which Dayton does not do very often. And the outside receiver, Gene Ray, number two, made the wrong side adjustment. He did a stop pattern when he should have done a fade or a go pattern down the sideline. So good one to do the punting and Manette, the deep man, to receive. Ten man front, and they only come after this in token fashion. A very short kick this time. Does take a union bounce, however, and goes down at the 30 yard line. More football coming your way on ESPN. The Air Force in Hawaii, two teams bound for bowl games. They play over in Hawaii, and boy, are the rainbow's tough over there. They are number 23 in the country, and they will be playing in the Aloha Bowl, so a home bowl game for them. And D. Dallas, one of the great stories in college football this year for the Air Force. Out of the I formation now, the Dayton Flyers trailing seven to nothing. This, the Division Three championship game, and a flag falls. Movement on the offensive line will cost them five yards. Once you get set in pro ball, in college ball, any level, you cannot move, and that'll put them back. As again, these are tough situations on a running football team to overcome. This is where you might see a pass on first down to try to get some yardage back in addition to the yardage lost. Charlie, high percentage passer. You touched on that earlier. Over 60% completions for Charlie. Saunders comes to the near side. Franks to the far side. Split backs on first down. Charlie again throws a little curl intended for Franks, and it is no good. Franks complaining that he was held. Well, the Union shifted their defense. Instead of their normal three deep, they went to a double rotation. Both corners coming up, suspecting the first down. You see the corner coming up and jamming him? Now, he might have been right. He hit him when the ball was in the air, and that is interference. If the ball's in the air, you cannot lay your hands on the defender unless you're going to the football. They go out of the eye formation on second down, and this time a sprint draw. And to whip the ball carrier gets to about the 30 yard line, a gain of about five yards, but it'll be third down and 10. Bill Deacons makes the stop. DeWitt with a little more wiggle than Manette. 
Also a better grass runner. In the one, one grass game he had this year, he gained 136 yards against Butler in that tie game, including a 76-yard touchdown. Now, we saw a draw. I wouldn't be surprised to come back with a draw on a screen back to back. Two tight ends in the lineup now on third down. Straight back, Charlie in trouble. And down he goes. Flag goes down. That's going to certainly be a hold. But the sack by Brian Faria, his second already. And they tried to keep everybody in to help the protect protection. Two third down long situations, two sacks. Holding is the call. They will decline that penalty, and Union will get the ball back. He again coming with a little stunt from the inside. And it drives him out of the pocket. Poor pass protection by the line of Dayton. They didn't pick up the line stunt. You saw the crisscross. You don't see a lot of that at this level. It's a real intricate, sophisticated type line stunt. And when it comes up, I'm sure they practiced it. But remember, they didn't know who they were going to play until after last week's games, and they only had a short time for Mike Kelly to prepare his uh, offensive defensive fronts. And he's got a riddle to solve right now. You talk about Union being sophisticated, and they are really a sophisticated offense. We'll talk more about that, offense and defense. This time the return man falls down, but it is picked up by Tolman, and Tolman's still on his feet at the 30, 35, flags all over the place. Giavo was the guy who was the deep man. He slipped trying to get to the ball. Well, the Tolman reason, came and picked it up. Well, the reason Tolman was there was going to be a reverse. Tolman has run that reverse six times for an average of 25 yards. He was coming around for a handoff. The ball was laying there, so he just picked it up and ran. the. That's why the blocking was there, and that's why it almost went all the way. Giving credence to what Mike Kelly said about Union. He said, Bagnati, he's a gimmick coach, and he's got a gimmick team. They're going to give you a lot of different looks. In the meantime, though, this one is going to go backwards. We'll take a timeout. Five minutes left. First quarter, seven to nothing. Union. You know, I think there's a great question as to what is Division Three football? What does this all mean? Maybe this will explain it a little bit, Stan. Well, that's the number of scholarships you can have on your total football squad at any one time. Of course, the big schools can have 95 players on scholarship. Division one double-A in fact we'll be at the division one double-A championship next week Barry 75 45 for division two but division three no scholarships at all Interesting in talking to these coaches how they attract kids to play in their program and again We will talk more about that give on first down To Alex Felipe in the ball game and he gets nothing So Mike Kelly and the Dayton Flyers have made some defensive adjustments after that first long drive by Union well, as he said, the first drive will give us an idea of what they're going to do, what we've practiced, and see if what we thought might work will work. And maybe it didn't on the first drive, so they're going to adjust and do little things a little differently. Slot right this time as Aaron Root slots inside of Ahern. Straight back rush to throw. A lot of time again over the middle, caught by the tight end, De Loretto once more, and a gain of about eight. Pretty soon the linebackers have to say, the tight end stays in to block. Keep an eye on it. That's a delay play. The tight end usually does not stay in. You can see him blocking the right of your screen and then comes out. He really just waves his arms. A linebacker has to be alert for that. You can burn him once, twice, but this is about the third time he's done that. You've got to be aware of the tight end. There's a pitch this time to Mason left side, and Mason almost never goes down with the first tackler. That could be enough for the first down. It'll be right on the uh, marker for a first down. Be interesting to see if they were short what uh, Al Bagnoli would do, backed up inside his own 30. One of the advantages that Dayton does have, Barry, is in the kicking game. Much better punting average, a All-American kicker, Mike Duvick, uh, Kodak All-American. Almost eight yards uh, a difference uh, per punt. That's a first down. Think about when the teams get to this level, a little short, and they will kick it away. Teams get to this level, both these teams have been able to score against everyone that they've played, and they've been able to stop the other guys from scoring. Well, the third down conversions, uh, if you just look at that, Union makes about 45% of the third down conversions and only gives up 18% on third down to their opponents. And those are that's a, those are unbelievable differences in statistics on third down conversion. So far, though, all the offense has gone to Union. 85 yards of offense for Union to four for Dayton. 
Of course, when you're 13 and 0, it means you dominated quite a bit throughout the season. The stats will be on your side. Yes, almost always. Yeah. So Union to punt it away. Manette, the deep man. And again, a short kick. Hits at midfield, takes a Union bounce to the 39-yard line. And that's where the Flyers will start when we come back. 324 left, Union 7, and Dayton nothing. Barry Tompkins with Stan White. We are back at the Division Three Championship game. The Dayton Flyers and the Union Dutchman. Union out of Schenectady, New York, and Dayton, of course, out of Dayton, Ohio. Flyers with the ball trailing seven to nothing. Short drop, and the pass is no good intended for Franks. Franks again ran it up. And Charlie threw the ball out. Well, Union knows. They've seen enough film on Dayton to know that they almost never throw deep. So they are playing everything tight. The corners are playing tight. They're giving them no uh, leverage, no cushion. And uh, Dayton's going to have to make some type of adjustment. Back to the delay patterns that take a while to cross. Or maybe they got to throw deep to loosen them up. Just to emphasize that point, their wide receivers collectively have one touchdown this year. Two tight ends this time, one wide out. That's Miller. Charlie gives this time on a sprint draw to Manette. Manette got about two, maybe three. So again, they're in third down in long situations. And Union brings in their two extra defensive backs, take out a linebacker and a nose man. And here's where they can do a lot of things. And uh, this is where they've got Dayton with blitzes for sacks the last two times. Tom McMahon on the tackle that time for Union. Two well-coached football teams here. Screens are good plays against uh, a blitz. Charlie this time to Manette again left side a little room first down and more midfield with a 49. And so it draws. <laughs> well Manette not showing any effects of the foot problem that has plagued him. This nice time we'll move the outside Barry no blitz you can see they're staying back in zone and Manette just makes a nice cut right there that shows that his foot is able to sustain his weight on the cutback, so he'll be all right. Out of the eye formation on first down now. Long count by Charlie. Give the fullback straight ahead and into the open for a moment. Hoffaker gets it down to about the 38-yard line, and that'll be another first down. This is the Syracuse option, the freeze option. It's a trap up the middle. The fullback, you see the quick trap, you see the pull, and it opens up the hole. That's going to help them get outside, Barry, because now they outside people have to respect the fullback. Now they can fake that and go down the line option, and it holds all the linebacker pursuit. So Dayton gets it going for the first time today. Two tight ends, one wide out, quick count. Hoffaker gets the call inside the 35 to about the 34. Gain of about four. Delicio coming over to make the stop from the right tackle spot defensively. Won't be long before we see that next option off of that same fullback trap. Freezes everybody, and then you can go down the line with the quarterback and the tailback. That's one way to get outside against a fast pers pursuing defense. The ball inside the 35, second down. Call it five. Pitch to Manette. Tries to get outside. Does. And gets about two to about the 32-yard line. Coming down near the end of the first period. 1-10 remaining. To look at Rob Manette out of Galleon, Ohio. And now Bagnati. He has brought his team a long way, considering he's coming off a 500 season a year ago. Third down, long four. Give it to Hoffaker, and he has the first down of the 25-yard line. Nothing fancy. No, and they were playing that very as four-down territory. Knowing if they could get two or three, they could come back again with Hoffaker. They would suspect that uh, he could get four yards on two carries. He got it all on one. Grossbeck comes on to replace Bill Smith now, who comes off with an injury. 
Might have just had the wind knock out him. He doesn't appear to be too seriously hurt. First down. Quick count. Play fake. Ball is good to Cameron. First down to the seven yard line. It's an example, though, how the inside running game of the fullback can open up not only the outside run, but the passing game. Jack Cameron, the backup tight end, but a better receiver. They fake, they hold the linebackers. Now you notice there's nobody around him. That's where the linebackers should be. But the running of Hoffaker kept them honest. And down goes Cameron to the five yard line. Full house backfield now on first down. And the give us the Hoffaker. Hoffaker to about the three yard line. And we probably will see a lot of him in here. We sure will. They've scored 94% of the time they get inside the 20. Not only because of Hoffaker, because of Mike Dubik, their kicker, also. Brings us to the end of the first quarter. And a look at the scoreboard shows Union 7 and Dayton nothing. This is an NCAA Productions telecast. Well, after Union scored with the first time it had the ball, it is Dayton has just turned things around on both sides of the football. We made some good adjustments, Barry, and we'll talk about those as we go along here in the second quarter. Full house backfield again. Hoffaker, this time he stood straight up short of the end zone. That'll be at about the one-yard line. This is a no-mystery offense when you get down inside the 10. It's just blood and guts. Who can hit each other the hardest? You see the big fullback, six, one, six foot, 215 pounds. Real big for this size. Now watch the hit he gets right here. He gets stood up real well, but he does not go down. He spins before help comes. He'll Tom get it again. Tom McMahon stood him up. Third down, about a yard from a touchdown. And this time, Charlie on the keeper rolls into the end zone. Charlie being a blue collar quarterback I think he showed a little of that right there they had him by the ankle but he had enough presence of mind to find that goal line as you mentioned earlier blue collar all he does is win he doesn't make it look fancy but somehow he got the ball into the end zone despite somebody having his ankle now no extra point is automatic but if there's any such thing as an automatic extra point this is it 57 for 57 this year Dubik Trying to make it 58 straight. Union was offside, and Dubik made it good. So this penalty will not matter. The extra point is good, and we are tied up. Just underway in the second quarter, and things have changed greatly. We sort of alluded to the fact in some of the conversations we had, as you look at Charlie again, watch this effort. You see, they have him by the ankle, but he twists and turns, finds the end zone, just gets the ball across the end line, he wins is the biggest thing that they could say about uh, Dan Charlotte. We talked about the fact, Stan, that this could come down to being a coach's game, meaning whoever makes the right adjustments after the opening kickoff could win the football game. Right at the moment, Dayton has made the right adjustments. And, you know, you're playing different opponents, people you've never seen all year long. It's tough to prepare. You can do it on paper, but anybody that's played football knows writing something down on paper with X's and O's and thinks it's going to work is a lot different than going out there when everybody's running full speed and seeing if it does work. So they had different options. As you see the uh, scoring drive, four minutes it took, 11 plays, 81 yards, almost the length of the field. But you don't know what's going to work. You have different options. Some may work, some may not work, as obviously Dayton has found out early. And it's interesting, too, in trying to prepare for a team. Not only have you never seen the team, you've never seen the teams that that team has been playing. Right. It's got to be very difficult. You know nothing about them. You don't know how good they are, how good the teams they played were. So you just prepare, and you give yourselves one, two, three options. As Mike Kelly told us, he kept it real simple because they had such a short time to prepare. But when the first thing didn't work, what they do? They went right to the second option and found out it's been more successful for them. So we're tied at seven. And again, it comes down to a coach's game. Now who will make the right adjustments? End over end, relatively short kick. Telemach and a little bit of disagreement. Now it's Tolman. The results are going to be the same no matter who took it, though. It's going to be back at the 17-yard line. They have to talk. It's almost like doubles tennis. If the ball goes down the middle, who's going to take it? And they have to know that before the ball is kicked. You see, they both are going for the football. 
neither of them are talking. Hey. <laughs> In fact, they both had the football, and neither of them are still talking. <laughs> they were very lucky, very fortunate that the ball didn't end up on the grass. So Brett Russ leads the Union Dutchman the line of scrimmage. They mark it at the 18-yard line. They bring Callahan in motion. Russ will put it up. Throws comebacker this time for a Hearn. And that could be enough for the first down. I believe it will be. The Hearn is almost like a uh, small tight end for this team. 6'4", 200 pounds. Not uh, much speed at all. In fact, he's caught 34 balls, but no touchdowns at all. He's just real intermediate. He finds the holes. You can see it takes a while for him to get open, but he stays with the play and comes back to his quarterback. And this time, whistle blows and a flag drops before the play could get started. Procedure. And it cost the Dutchman five yards. Here's a look at Charlie, the man who just took it in for the Dayton Flyers. Dayton is one of those schools, incidentally, plays Division I basketball, but plays Division III football, and there's a lot of consternation in college circles and in NCAA circles about how all of that works and how conceivable it really is. Out of the I formation this time on first and 15. Callahan in motion again. And a draw play for Mason. Forget it. It was Telemac, the ball carrier, and not Mason that time. But still, forget it. We well, alluded to the, uh, the fact that Dayton's Division I basketball and Division III football, you can't do that anymore. And it's called the Dayton rule just because of what Dayton had the success that it has. You can actually do it, but you can't play in the playoffs. Pass this time is caught by Eugene Ray for a gain of about 12. It'll still be a couple of yards short of the first down. Doug Ryan on the defense, and Ray comes out a little gingerly. This is very the same play that Ahern caught the last time. Just flipped it over. He comes back with the curl pattern. And notice again, coming back to the quarterback. He goes beyond the linebackers and then back in front of him. Still short of the first down by about two yards. And a timeout being called by Brett Russ as the Dutchman hustling people on and off the field. We'll take a timeout also with 12 minutes and 35 seconds remaining to be played in the half. It's Union 7 and Dayton 7. <laughs> U.S. Army students of the game are from Dayton. Dan Charlie, the quarterback, 3.35 in journalism. And for Union, Mark Callahan, a 3-4 GPA in mathematics. Mason has the first down for Union. Randy Robeson makes the tackle, but not before Mason picks up about five. The big men still are the guys that they're going to in the tough situations for both teams. Mason when Union needs the yardage, and Hoffaker when Dayton needs it. This time Aaron Root splits to the near side. On first down. Pitch to Telemach. Telemach turns it up, gets to midfield. No inside pursuit. The linebacker does a good job in handling the tight end, DiLoretto. Watch the cutback right inside of the tight end's block, and nobody coming from the inside. The inside linebackers got cut off, and you just can't do that. The outside linebacker did his job, but didn't get his help. Out of the eye formation again. Give it this time to the fullback, Felipe, and he's turned around short of the first down. Lou Lundcar makes the tackle. What they're hoping to do there, Barry, is off the fake toss and the quick belly play to the fullback is to catch him slanting towards the tight end, which Dayton has showed a high propensity of doing. As we talked to Mike Kelly last night, they aren't going to do it today, so it has foiled that play all day for Union. They'll go with the wishbone now on third down, about a yard and a half. McLaughlin, Mason, and Lombardoni, and that's Mason for the first down. Mason now. 
Mason may have landed wrong either on his shoulder or on the football itself. Mason got, could have the wind knocked out of him. 42 yards rushing so far for Mason on 10 carries. Doesn't appear to be a serious injury. And he is okay. Yeah, it was either the wind got knocked out of him or a national television injury. <laughs> so that's right. Some of the soldiers from just up the road at Fort Benning, Georgia, on hand for this one. Aren't they home watching the Army Navy game? <laughs> it's later. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Everything's later today. Russ straight back to pass again, waits for traffic, throws over the middle, the ball is good, and another first down to the 32-yard line. Gerald Walker on the reception. Gerald Walker is their best receiving tailback. He runs a delay pattern this time. He has 18 catches. Watch him on the right side of your screen, just delaying. Instead of the tight end delaying, they switch it around. Use the tight end to clear out this time. Delay with the running back. So it's constant delays that are mixing up well and throwing it off the read for the linebacker. So both teams now able to move the football pitch to Telemac. Telemac doesn't get much. Short of the 30 yard line, a flag is down. Steve Willowit turned him sideways, didn't allow him to cut back. Incidentally, Steve Willowit, interesting story, his father was on that United Airlines flight that crashed in Iowa and survived. Yeah, I'm sure he's uh, very happy to be at this game today, yes. to be anywhere today. That would be a harrowing experience. I wonder if he drove to the game. Said, <laughs> said it gave him a whole new perspective. <laughs> Holding call going to go against Union. And that will take it back to the 42-yard line. Tied at 7, 10-08 remaining. First half, Barry Tompkins with Stan White. Russ has completed his last four passes. They come with a trips right set. Now they've been Telemach in motion. Play fake in trouble. Russ is wrapped up all the way back at the 46-yard line by Lou Lonkar with great pursuit. Nobody touched it. Well, he got a great start off the ball, anticipating the snap. Now, he's listed as 5'11 and 210, but they tell us he's down to about 190 pounds. See him come off the ball? He gets right by the pulling guard and into the backfield for the sack. That's his 11th sack of the season. Watch him come off. See, he's in the backfield. That's, that's the whole idea, getting off on the ball defensively. You beat him to the point of attack. So it'll be second down and a whole bunch. Russ straight back. Looks deep in trouble. Down he goes again. Flag falls. That'll be a hold. It'll be declined, and it's going to be a big loss. Lonkar once again, two sacks on two plays. Well, when you're 190 pounds or 200 or 210 or whatever it is, you better be quick. And we've seen his quickness. The outside move, this time the inside move by Lou Lonkar. So See now, you see him coming up the middle this time. It was a stunt. Both teams using some line stunts effectively. Union going backward in a big hurry here. It is all the way back now at the 37-yard line, and it's going to be third down. Got to get the abacus out for this one. Third and 37. They can't punt that far. That's right. <laughs> Russ this time gives to Mason, and Mason got about five back. But to make a first down, they got to go to another area code. Randy Robeson made the tackle. They still can't punt the bar. Their average 31 right. yards a punt for the season, and it's 32 yards to go. <laughs> and the Flyer fans on the far side of the field pumped up about all this. The deep man's only 30 yards deep. And again, a wobbly kick that will hit at the 29-yard line and again take a union bounce to the 20-yard line. So Manette had no chance that time. We'll take a timeout, 8-12 remaining in the half. Union 7, Dayton 7. We'll be back to Phoenix City.
Yeah, 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 yeah it, it sure did. I mean, it looked like Union was going to steamroll for a while. That's a knee. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's one of those knee braces. You can see it right on the side that they all wear now. That's number the lineman, 67. Seven or two, is it? I think it's a two. Oh, yeah, it is 62. I saw him go off earlier. Well, football's, football's a tough game. You can see they're putting that rod right up his leg. That's very painful. <laughs> Actually, it's a knee brace, and it's all okay. <laughs> well, that knee brace is protected against injuries, and they loosened that up and put ice on there. So he obviously has had problems with that knee, and the knee brace itself has not uh, taken care of the problem completely. We talk about adjustments, and there's the man who has made some very good ones. Mike Kelly is a defensive specialist and still coaches the defense. Manette gets nothing on first down. Smith made the tackle. It was DeWitt in the ball game, not Bennett. Well, Union made the adjustment in that play. They came with a all-out uh, front. Everybody slanting to the inside to take away that countered play that uh, Dayton ran. So Union now has readjusted to some of the things because they know how important first down is. Dayton feels they have to get four downs, and they didn't. Actually lost a yard, second and 11. Charlie straight back to pass this time over the middle and a fine hit that time. Just did not allow DeWitt to make that catch and it was Bob Riglietti who made the tackle. And what a tackle. It's about linebackers reading the delay patterns. This is what happens when you do read the delay pattern. He's coming to the ball. See 44? He was moving to the point before the ball was even thrown. And the point he got were the ribs of Manette. And he's still down on the field. Perfectly clean hit. Timeout on the field. 7.37 remaining in a half. We're tied at 7-7. Well, Jay DeWitt is up and okay, but it wasn't for a want of a good hit, I'll tell you that. Sure wasn't. We'll see it one more time. 44, the left of your screen. Reading delay pattern to DeWitt. Sticks his helmet right in there. Riglietti, the man who made the hit, straight ahead this time for about five yards on the third down play, and it was Manette, but not nearly enough. Bill Deacons made the stop, and Dayton will kick it back to Union. So this game has really settled down. Both teams have had the one good long drive, and right at the moment, it's a defensive struggle. Another short kick. We've had a bunch of those. Fair catch. Giamo at the 49-yard line. So Union again with good field position actually wound up with about a plus 10 after going backward on its last possession. I would be surprised to see Union go back to what it did early in the game, which is get the ball to Ryan Mason with a head of steam and just let him break tackles. They were real successful in that first drive. They put Mason up on the wing on first down. Lombardoni is the setback. Russ Rolls throws for the tight end. De Loretto is third catch, but this one only for about two yards. Comfort made the tackle. Russ has completed five passes in a row, but he's also been sacked a couple of times in that course, three times. Mason comes out, Telemac comes on for the Dutchman. They give this time to Telemac, and Telemac runs into traffic after about a yard, might have gotten two yards, to about the 47 yard line. Slow developing play. And it looked like it was. The way Telemac was running and gaining speed, it was going to be a nice gainer for him. But you got to remember, he was lined up seven, eight yards deep in that single back offense. So he had to make a lot of yards just to get to the line. And the, the play was stacked up, and he ran really into his own blockers. Slot right now on third down and six. They'll go from the I formation. Russ will throw. Does so, and incomplete. Intended for a diving Aaron Root, well defended that time by Brent Cuthbert. Cuthbert did a nice job playing man-to-man -man defense. He knew it was an intermediate passing situation, so he played it 
inside out and in front of the receiver, and it would have been a great throw, a perfect throw for the completion. That's the toughest throw to the outside. That's why you play inside and force him to throw outside. So Union unable to make a first down once again. They will have to give it up again. It's a good thing the rush wasn't on because a little bad handling of that snap. And the net lets it go, and it goes dead at the seven-yard line. So the punting hasn't been very pretty, but I guess you can make a case for it being effective, at least this time. Well, Manette's got to realize he's, he's moving up, but he should move over to his left because the ball is coming off to the right, almost shanking off the foot of the punter each time that Union has punted. Let's take a look at the storyline in this game as it has progressed so far. And what we find, really, I'm sure, is an interesting matchup in that it is almost dead even. Russ, 8 of 11, 72 yards, but consider the three sacks. Mason has rushed for 45 yards, but most of that came in the first drive. And Charlie, the big play, taking it in from a yard out. We're tied at seven. Huffaker for four on first down. It would look like it might be a wide open, high scoring game as all of a sudden turned to the fact that it's now a physical ram one, it ran another foot tight football game. <laughs> Second and six now. Split backs behind Charlie, two tight ends. And that's Hoffaker again, tripped up as he crossed the 10-yard line. You saw Bob Leonard being fitted with that brace a couple of moments ago, the middle guard for Dayton, the nose guard. He is out for the day, sprained knee. And that's gonna be trouble for Dayton because he's the key, the middle guard of a 3-4 defense is always the man who disrupts the running game by his penetration. I know that uh, Al Bagnoli was worried about Leonard. I guess he didn't have to worry about the rest of this guy. Slot right on third and six. Passing situation, that is the situation Union wants Dayton in, and they give it to Manette. He'll be stopped short of the first down at the 15-yard line. Incidentally, DeWitt, who took that hit from Rigliotti in the last series is okay and will be back. Well, Union has come in again with that nickel package on third and six, and Dayton goes right to the run. What they might do later is go to the option against that nickel, because then you really force the corners and you don't have the linebackers in there. So another punting situation. End over end kick headed for Giamo and it'll never get to him. It will go out of bounds at midfield. So plus one this time for Union. They keep having him kick. They're going to wind up in the end zone. Time out. 3:33 left. Union seven. Dayton seven. Football fever spreading all over Schenectady, New York, and today it's spreading all over America as Division Three football comes to national television. And the lights come on. I thought it was the sun for a minute, but the lights are on. <laughs> we haven't seen that for days. <laughs> Dayton shows blitz on first down, now they back off. And a direct snap this time going to Alex Felipe, and it doesn't work. We talked about the fact Mike Kelly had told us that this is a gimmick team. It's the second time they've tried something, the second time it hasn't worked. Well, that was a snap between the quarterback's legs to the fullback. He tried to boomerski it and put it behind him. Watch the fullback to the left part of your screen. The ball comes to him, but he drops it. Watch him put it behind him. <laughs> He's gonna hide that football. Unfortunately, it hit the ground and he showed everybody it before he tried to hide it. Interesting play. Not successful, but interesting. Yes, yeah, right. And what it results in is a second and 12. And this time it's Mason. And he gets back to midfield and it might have gotten to the 49 yard line, but Union gonna be looking at a third and long once more. Lou Loncar, who's been everywhere defensively for Dayton, makes the stop once more. You know, sitting up here, Barry, you can see every time that they're going to run that counter play. The one side of the line is pulling is almost a half a yard or a yard deeper than the other side. The question is, does Dayton see that too? Slot left. On second down, and third down and 10. Russ will throw. Again, has time. Throws over the middle. The ball is caught, but short of the first down by Walker. At about the 44-yard line. And now Union's in a situation they got to make a decision here. They'll be looking at a fourth down and a long four. And with two minutes left in the half, it looks like they're... Well, it looked like they were thinking about going for it. Now here comes their punting team. 
The defense has done a good job the last few times, so it's something I'm sure that was going through at Outback Miller's mind. But he thinks better of it not to give him any type of gift before halftime. So Manette will have another chance, although he really hasn't had too many chances to return the punts. Of Mike Richardson. Manette stands this time at the 15 yard line. Delay a game. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> they have enough trouble playing. I know, that's right. <laughs> it wasn't like he was going to kick it out of the uh, out of the end zone if he didn't take the delay. I don't think they're so sophisticated they take a penalty that could throw them off balance and then run a fake. I, I would think not. <laughs> <laughs> Although with Union, they say don't be surprised at anything. And it's blocked. picked up and moved down to the 19 and now it goes ahead I don't believe that'll be allowed I don't believe that'll be allowed under the rules of college football this year last year yes this year no so it'll be at the 19 yard line Sean Canelli who has already blocked three field goal tries this year blocks that punt and it was a pretty ugly looking punt as he just held on to that ball forever it seemed. Well they decide to go with the rush after the penalty. He somehow thinks he's going to get blocked. He, he panics, runs to his right, and runs right into somebody that would never have a chance to block it. As you watch it, the ball keeps popping out. Then it pops out and is picked up and running for a touchdown, but they put it back at the 19 yard line. They can't advance a ball that was fumbled ahead anymore in college football. Charlie this time gives the fullback Alexander and he gets ahead to about the 12 yard line big break for Dayton here and Dayton when it has had the breaks has been able to capitalize almost all year. Let's look at that block punt one more time. See almost goes to his side way out where the outside men the outside men should not be able to block it even if he's untouched but when you run to him he's going to be able to get to it. That's exactly what happened is Richardson panicked with the rush coming up the middle. The Flyers so far have gotten 35 turnovers this year and they have scored on 21 of those. Sean Canelli blocked the punt. He's had a big game and he's one guy that they said really has the ability to play at higher division levels division one double A maybe even division one. He has that type of ability. It's interesting in talking about how to both these coaches about how they attract student athletes to their school and Mike Kelly had an interesting point. He said he goes after guys who are being talked to by schools in the Mid-America Conference. Right. He's in the Ohio land where there's a plethora of high school football players and a lot of them are going on to Big Ten and into the MAC and some of them that don't get accepted in the final cut by the MAC and then look to Dayton because they've been so successful. And Union College attracts kids who understand what plethora means. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They could even spell it. <laughs> <laughs> Union College attracts the student athletes who want to go to a small campus, very Ivy League type campus. In fact, we're going to talk to the presidents of both universities at halftime, find out a little bit more about them. Meanwhile, Dayton trying to take the lead here. Hoffaker gets it down about the seven yard line. And that'll be enough for first down. Hurry up offense with 47 seconds left in the first half. Clock will stop while the flags are moved. The problem with that running attack is it takes a little while to get into the end zone. <laughs> 47 seconds left. First half, 7 7. Now the clock starts again. And the give us to Hoffaker again. No surprise there. Gets it to the 45 yard line, and now they'll call a timeout with 34 seconds left. I believe that's their first time out. I, we don't have that on the scoreboard, but I don't remember them calling any other time out. So with two more left, they should uh, have plenty of time to get into the end zone. 34 seconds left and two times. Dayton off the block kick. Canelli, and we talked about Canelli being a big play guy. He made the biggest play in the first half, which has given Dayton the opportunity to take the lead. Give to Hoffaker again. Hoffaker head down, drives to the three yard line, and let's see if they take another timeout. They do, but they haven't yet. With 25 seconds left, the clock is still ticking. 
And a lot of confusion here as the clock continues to roll. 15 seconds left now. They've let 14 seconds tick off this clock. And now, Union calls a timeout. I'd say confusion reigns at this point. I would say that's fair, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Dayton can't figure out whether to take a timeout, and Union doesn't know what players they have on the field, so I'm glad somebody stopped the action. You would think they would run some sort of option here, would you not? I think they try to get the ball in the end zone, option run pass type situation, but that's not really their forte. I mean, uh, Charlie is not, even though he did score the one touchdown off the option, it was off the surprise. This is not a surprise situation. Union in a nickel defense on this situation. And they give it to Hoffaker at the left side, and he's not going to get there. And it's a play that's using up some time. Will they get the timeout called? Yes, they do. With two seconds left, Bill Deacons was the man who just would not allow Hoffaker into the end zone. Yeah, they should have let him run a little bit further down towards the end side, toward the, towards the uh, out of bounds line. You see, it's the power play. Give it right to him, but it's all stacked up. He does break the tackles, but nice pursuit by Deacons, and he, the help gets to him. 13 out of 17 in field goal tries this year for Dubik, and Union's going to call a timeout and ice him a little bit. Except their team doesn't see the coach saying a timeout. The team is all zeroed in on blocking the field goal. Everybody in the stadium sees him calling a timeout except the Union players. And it was a bad snap, but it did get put down and is good. Well, I'll tell you what, those are some of the ugliest 19 yards I've ever seen. But they got three points and they have the 10-7 halftime lead. <laughs> Not pretty, mind you but a 10 to seven halftime lead for Dayton as they capitalize on the block field goal try. We got a timeout into the first half, 7-7. Seven, seven. So we are all set to go. Short kick this time, Husted takes it and is down as he crosses the 25 at the 28 yard line. Been a lot of short kicks in this football game, but none of them has, has really hurt. Now let's go defense! These teams both play on artificial turf, and the kicking changes quite a bit on regular grass. The ball does not bounce as much as you would on a punt, and the ball does not uh, come up as quickly on the place kick. First down, and Charlie throws, and the ball is caught by Franks, who steps out of bounds to the 35 yard line. Bill Deacons makes the stop. Of Franks was the guy who made the play. We did just get uh, an explanation from the officials saying that the ball was ruled down before he fumbled, but if he was down, why did he run downfield and then go back and spot the ball? If he's down, he's down at that moment, and then you mark it. Gain of seven on first down, and this time they give us the Hoffaker, and he stopped short of the first down as he gets across the 35 yard line, but only a gain of about a yard. Bob Anderson on the defense. Hoffaker has been real effective going straight ahead, staying inside. You saw it down near the goal line. When he tries to get outside, it's turned just a little bit, the shoulders away from the line of scrimmage. He's not nearly as effective for two reasons. That's just his running style. He's also had two hit pointers that have limited him a little bit from the outside game. Franks comes to the near side, Miller to the far side on third down and three. Hoffaker again, forget it. Dayton will have to give it up. So both defenses have really started to dominate things here. Giamo will be the deep man for Union. He stands the 30 yard line. A little bit better punt this time. Drives Giamo back to 23, can't handle it. Ball's loose, Giamo falls on it. Union will have it, but back at the 23-yard line. Well, that was a knuckleball. That was a tough catch. Those are the time you just kind of just let go. Good thing he got onto the football, Giamo did. Let's take a look at that block punt one more time, Barry, to see if he was really down. Here is the block punt. 
Hate to keep harping this, but this could be a major difference in this football game. The ball's knocked forward. It's picked up right here. Now here's where the fumble is. There's the referee. The ball comes out, and he follows the play. He doesn't mark him down. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Russ on first down gives to Mason. Mason slips by the first group of tacklers, gets across the 30 to the 31, a gain of eight. Almost to the 32-yard line. That is a case of dancing with what brung you, because that is exactly the way Union started on its first drive that resulted in its only touchdown. They went right at, they used their size advantage. There you see Ryan Mason, we talked about him at 6'2", 230. The biggest guy on the defensive front to date was 6'1", 230. The rest of them are 200 or below. Mason again. First down across the 35. Randy Robeson on the stop, but not before Ryan Mason picks up a first down for Union. Some of these players for Dayton are listed at 210 and 210, 225, but their coaches have told us worn down through the season, and a lot of these kids are smaller kids that have gained weight artificially, but have not been able to hold it throughout the season. Lombardoni gets the call and only gets a couple. In fact, just about a yard. That's the play that has not been effective because Dayton has not done the slanting that uh, Union anticipated. Second down, about nine and a half. They bring Mason up on the wing on second down. They haven't been doing a lot of shifting today. We really expected they might do more. Straight back Russ. Throws over the middle, tight end once more. De Loretto for about four. No fumble, they say. Dayton wants the fumble, but official is saying incomplete pass. Anytime there's a question, the point of emphasis among the officials this year, the question whether it was a catch or a fumble, they are saying, or an incompletion, they're saying it's an incompletion. There's a delay again. See, it delays and it comes out late. The linebackers this time are aware of it. See how they're right on it? Here's the ball. We can't see when it pops out, but in any question, they're calling it incomplete, no fumble. That would seem right. I don't think he ever did have possession. Out of the eye formation, third down, and a long nine. Straight back Russ. Here comes the pressure on him again. Throws what I imagine was going to be a screen, but it was really well defended by Dayton. And again, it was Lou Lockhart who was right in the face of Brett Russ. And Jim Moko was right in the face of the intended receiver, Ryan Mason, on the screen pass and made uh, the play ineffective and made Russ throw the ball completely out of bounds. So Richardson to punt. Manette stands at the 31 yard line. And he hits this one pretty good. He turned this one over to about the 25. Manette now surrounded and down short of the 30 yard line. So Dayton will start at its own 30 yard line. An exchange of punts to start the second half. 11.46 remaining third quarter. 10 to 7, Dayton. 10 to 7 ball game in this Division Three championship. The Dayton Flyers leading it with benefit of a field goal to end the first half following a blocked punt. Both teams a long drive to score a touchdown. Otherwise, it's been a defense-dominated game. Charlie this time gives straight ahead to Alexander, and Alexander got something out of nothing. Gained about seven. from the ground as you would from the sideline. You see him go into the hole and lower his head. Good running room, good hole opened up, which enabled him to get his momentum. A fullback, he feels if he can get to the linebackers with the full momentum, he's gonna make some yardage. Full house backfield on second and three. And to give this time to Hoffaker, and he's gonna be close to the first down. I believe he has it at the 40-yard line. Hoffaker, the guy they go to in short yardage situations. 49 yards so far on 16 carries for Hoffaker. Hoffaker had five touchdowns in one game against John Carroll, and that is a Division III playoff record. Interestingly enough, he's a transfer from Hartnell Junior College, which is in Salinas, California. Tell me how he gets the date. Rollout this time. Charlie looks, throws, caught. At the 42-yard line by Franks. 
Riglietti on the defense, but Charlie, for the first time today that I can recall, put it downfield. And what happened was there was such a cushion this time that Franks was a clear out man, but he stops because he sees the defensive back so deep. And the defensive back falls down right here. Lunch. If there's a good pursuit by this up back, that would have been a touchdown as the corner fell down and it was almost disaster. So a first down at the 40 yard line of Union. Fullback Alexander again, and he gets it down about the 37. Pick up of about four. We still haven't seen the option off of that series. We've seen the trap a couple of times. That's a play that has some potential, and they do get to it. They're going to give him three yards, a little more than three yards. Pretty generous spot that time. Put it up, throw slant, batted away nicely by Bob Riglietti. Intended for Franks, and Riglietti got a hand on it nicely. Yeah, nice play by Riglietti. The linebacker, when he drops and he sees the back run quickly to the flat, he knows the wide receiver is running a slant. He doesn't have to look for him. He just looks for the ball and hopes to get to there. He sees his hand on it, but see the back out in the flat? It gives it away to the linebacker. It's a combination pattern. One out to the flat, a wide receiver coming behind. Slot left this time, and a give on a little bit of a delay to Monette. Fumbles the football, and Union has it. Bob Anderson made the hit to force the fumble. He ever got that football it looked like it may have been a bad exchange between Charlie and Manette. Let's see it right here. He's cutting back so quick. He, he just hits his elbow. You see, he put his arm up and he hit the elbow and never got the football. So Union with a break now turns things around. They have it at the 40 yard line. Russ will put it up on first down. Throws underneath, intercepted. Picked off nicely that time by Canelli. His second big play. And Russ threw it right to him. That helped. Sure did. Canelli made a nice break on the ball. Again, he read the pattern. The inside man came down and hooked, which means the outside man's basically going to do the same thing. They did not interchange. Watch Canelli break on the ball. See, he's breaking right there and makes a nice catch because that play was all the way to the sideline, which means he had a long way to go. But a good read by Canelli, and the ball's right back in Dayton's hands again. It really was. He didn't throw it to him quite as much as I thought when I saw the play live. Play fake, and Charlie will go up, looks for it all, throws deep. Franks, double coverage, makes the catch! What a grab by Franks at the five-yard line! Can't fault the defense. Yeah, you talk about having confidence in a receiver. You aptly described double coverage and tight double coverage. But he knows this receiver. He knows he'll go up and fight for the ball. And he goes between the men, jumps, when they were see the defensive men have their feet in the ground. You see, he's jumping. The other two defensive men have their feet on the ground. You have to go up to get to the football. The first thing they teach you defensively. Hoffaker gets it on first down, takes it to the three-yard line. I'm surprised he was so well covered because Dayton very rarely goes deep. And there's a look at the man who made that play, Bill Franks, Jr. out of Newark, Ohio. Actually, does not go deep. Is belied by, I guess, maybe evidence of the fact is the fact that he has 49 or 50 catches now and no touchdowns. Longest one was 30 yards prior to that one. Offaker again. Stop short again. Two yard line this time, and it's going to be third down and goal. Well, they do have a play action pass off this series and an option. I'd expect since the option is going once already to try to hit that back out of the backfield on play action here. Mike Kelly now has to dig down to find something. He said, when it comes down to the big calls, I'm the one that's going to make them, because if they go bad, I want them to blame me. Well, the author said, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down on my own calls. <laughs> Full house backfield. And Charlie on the keeper, stopped for a loss of two. So Union, when they do get down deep in their own territory, is has been able to do something that no other team that Dayton has played has been able to do, and that is stop them in close. 
But again, they probably will score because of Mike Dugan. That 94% includes both touchdowns and field goals inside the 20-yard line. He's got a much better position to kick it this time. See the real rush by the defense to, uh, you know, they sent everybody. They didn't even play the pass, so maybe they, sh they should have passed. 21-yarder for Dugan this time, and it's blocked. The man who got through. Was Chris Decker to block the field goal try. Well, the second half has been a half of big plays on both sides of the ball. Well, this ball never got up, but we watched him in warm ups. He was having trouble off this turf getting any elevation. Watch the ball straight into the line. The leapers hit it, hit the leapers in the belly. So we'll take a timeout, 721 remaining, and Union dodges a bullet. Don't give them a darn thing. Don't give them a lick, baby. Nothing big. Nothing big. Make them earn. Just keep hanging in there. Yeah, watch number 44 right at the goal line as he times his leap just right. The ball is low, but he's right there to block the kick and thwart this scoring effort. Bob Rigoletti. So here comes Union now with Mason, the ball carrier, looking for some place to go and doesn't find any place. Got to the 16-yard line, maybe a yard. Randy Robeson turned in the other way. Mason's been more effective on the uh, straight-ahead inside plays where he can really get that, uh, that beef rolling. Eight of a yard, it'll be second and nine. Lot left on second down. Russ hadn't been able to put the ball downfield at all today. Give this time to the fullback Felipe, and he gets across the 20 to the 21-yard line. A little counter play. Randy Robeson again on the stop. Brent Russ has set all the passing records for Union this year: 200 completions, 370 attempts. 23 touchdowns, but he's got very little going, all short stuff today. He's got to get the ball over the linebackers and between the secondaries. Third down, about five. Russ on a short drop. Throws this time too tall. Intended for Mark Callahan. That's the one he has to hit. That's the area, that dead area there that he has not been able to get the ball into. He had his man in that little seam, but threw it behind him. So Union will have to give it up again. Richardson to punt and Manette standing right now at the 46 yard line. Manette will try this one from the 44. Slips by the first man now at midfield. Could go 45 to the 40. 35 to the 30. 20. One man to beat and he can't do it at the four yard line. But a big return for Manette. He's the big play guy that Dayton was looking for to do something, and right there, he did. This is one of the first ones he's really had the opportunity to return. It's one that gets to him in the air and does not have a bevy of players in his face. He has one right here, makes the good first move to miss. Now watch the acceleration through the seam and then down the sideline, outrunning the Union pursuit. And only one man, nice crack back block there. You love those defensively. You don't get three shots like that very often. But you see, one man to beat. He does get him out of bounds, but a big play by Rob Manette. At the five-yard line, Hoffaker is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Mark Delicio stood him up. There's Alexis Manette. All 5'8", 164 pounds of him. Second down and goal from the five-yard line. The Union's been tough in here. Full house backfield again. We keep waiting for that option. And that was a variation on the option, but to no avail as Hoffaker was stopped by Bill Smith. It's not working. It's not. <laughs> this is the third time down here now, and it has not worked. It didn't work after the uh, blocked punt. It didn't work after the long pass, and it's not working this time. Somewhere there's got to be an adjustment. They do bring in a new formation. I guess that's their adjustment. So it'll be third down and goal. Two tight ends, one wide out. That is Saunders, and they go out of the I formation this time. 
Charlie this time will keep it, turns it up, touchdown! His second of the day. Well, finally, as advertised. Charlie now accounting for both touchdowns for Dayton on the option play. They've effectively shut off the big touchdown man, Kevin Hoffaker. They've taken that away, but when you do concentrate all your efforts on one player, it does leave another area open, and it's turned out to be the quarterback on the option. So the All-American kicker, Dubik, who just had one blocked a moment ago, will try to convert his 58th consecutive extra point. He's thinking about getting it up. And he does. And it's good. Take another look at that option, and here's the man who ran. This is called the speed option, or down the line, just directly, the lead block by the fullback. You see right there was the tight end block was the key. He got number 20, Tim Kempsey, on the ground, and he could not make the tackle on the quarterback. A load option. 17 to 7. We'll be back. Burns will kick it off. He'll be kicking to Telemark. And Tolman, who had trouble handling the last kickoff. Again, a short kick. Telemark at the 12. 25-30. Little room, 35. Hurdles a man at the 40-yard line. Fumbles the football, but it's out of bounds. It'll come back to the 40-yard line. So Dayton right now has it all going. Only five yards that time. But that following the 51-yard punt return by Manette. Charlie's second touchdown run of the day. Boy, is he the boy next door? He sure has done the job. He's a, they say all he does is win and not been real flashy. And doesn't show the gun of an arm, but he gets the ball into the end zone. From Memphis, Tennessee. Russ straight back to pass. Throws over the middle. Caught this time by the tight end, DiLoretto. And it'll be a first down at midfield. First first down of the second half for Union. Randy Robinson on the stop. Watch Mario DiLoretto use his girth. 6'1", 225. On the linebacker, Robinson, watch him shove him off right there, knock him back, and then make the catch and get the first down. As a linebacker, you, and he, you see him running at you, you got to sidestep that contact. Sixth catch for DeLoretto. Mason gets a little room, but is hauled down at the 46-yard line. It was there for a moment, then shut down by Bruce Moxley. Seven ball game, and Union is going to have to generate some offense. They've been unable to do that thus far in the second half. Mason, 65 yards rushing. Russ again with time over the middle, again to DiLoretto, and again for a first down. So when it comes to crunch time, he's the guy. This time it wasn't the hook, it was a cross. He goes down inside. He does not push off the linebacker this time. He makes the move behind him. And then makes the catch. DiLoretto has really come into play since, really since the season's ended. Ball just inside the 40-yard line. First down, Union. Mason, about two. Steve Willowit on the stop. Willowit just a sophomore. We talked about the fact that Dayton. You have to think that Mike Kelly has got to be looking forward not only obviously to this game but to next year because he's got virtually the whole team coming back. Only five seniors were starting today for Dayton. And one, DiGiacomo, had hardly played this year. Russ will put it up on second down over the middle. DiLoretto again can't hang on. It's picked. Dayton with the interception and it was Doug Ryan who stayed with it. break for Union, but a big-time defensive play by Ryan just to stay with that. You see DiLoretto's trying to get the ball, but the really the guy who makes the interception is, of all people, the nose guard who's in for Bob Leonard, who's hurt. Watch him stay with it right here. Makes good count, maybe a little early, but watch the nose guard come back. Number, end, number 90, Robert Christie. He comes back, and those guards don't make many interceptions, but Hustle will get you into the right place at the right time. So it was Christie, just a freshman, not Ryan. Charlie throws for Franks, and this time Franks is surrounded and down after a game of three. Bill Deacons on the tackle. 
linebacker did a good no, no, job that up. time of not allowing De Loretto to push okay, off. Okay, he avoided okay, the, ahead, the man, big man, man, didn't allow him to push off. That way he could make the move on him as the ball was in the air and really caused the bobble. In effect, then the interception. Do the best you can on him in the box, okay? Christy, who made the pick. I can't get up high here. Second down, and they give to Hoffaker, and Hoffaker gets close to the 35-yard line, about three more. Andrietti on the tackle for Union, but right now, Dayton seems to be getting off the ball a little bit quicker on the offensive line. Well, they have the momentum going. They're making the big plays throughout the game, the long passes, the kick returns. The only big plays Union made were on short yardage on the first drive of the game, and they have done nothing since then to sustain any emotion. Al Bagnoli having to find something now out of the eye formation on third down and a short three. And a pitch off the option this time to Manette. Manette has the first down and much more crossing the 45-yard line. Rick Rodan makes the tackle. Well, that's the play that I've been waiting for anyhow. That's the outside option off the fake to the fullback. As you watch the outside people, there is nobody there for the pitch. Why? Because they had to really respect the fullback dive right here. Boom. Now the quarterback quickly, he takes a hit right there from Greg Hallis, but nobody is there for the pitch play. That's how you get outside. You freeze the inside and you go two on one in the corner man. Dayton seizing control of this football game right now. A draw play for Manette, flagged down as Manette gets the 48 yard line and we'll see what this is all about. I imagine that's holding again. I would think so. to get you out of a rhythm faster than anything else. It's sure going to change the, the play call. Now you're thinking first and 20, you're thinking, uh, you know, the option play, maybe screen or draw, short pass, something to get back in range. He's got 20 yards to make in three plays. Just over a minute remaining in the third quarter, and Dayton leads by 10, 17 to 7 with the ball. But it is a holding penalty, and so Dayton will be looking at one of those first down and 20s. Scrimmage Charlie with two touchdowns, both Dayton touchdowns. They bring Manette split to the outside. And right now, there's nobody on him. Charlie will pass, steps up, now will run. 35 40 to about the 43 yard line. Got about eight. Tom McMahon makes the tackle for the Dutchman. Now you don't know whether this was the design or not. They had split out so wide that the uh, players were almost out of the play, and you wondered whether that was by design or he just saw the pressure and took off and ran. Either way, it was a good play. Got eight of that penalty back, so it's second and 12. Slot left, the net in the slot. Charlie will throw again over the middle, this time to the tight end. That is Bob Keller. As we come to the end of the third period, and a look at the scoreboard shows Dayton 17 and Union 7. We'll be back. Go now, you! Barry Tompkins with Stan White. This is the Division Three Championship game, and Dayton leads the Union Dutchman by 10. Dutchman running out of time. One quarter left, Barry. Big third down play. They have their nickel defense in. I'd suspect option if I was looking on defense. And Dayton has converted on five of six third down situations. Fumble a snap. Well, it wasn't pretty, but it got it done. So far as Union is concerned. And it was the down the line option that they used to score the touchdown, but they just bobbled the snap, and now they're going to have to punt it. That's a big play for the Union defense because they need to get two scores, one of them being a touchdown in this fourth period. They've done nothing since the first drive. They need some big plays to turn this momentum. And they have been a very good fourth quarter team, and all you need to do is look one week ago against Ferrum when they scored 27 points in the final period. They come after this one and don't get it, and a fair catch 
called for, and they let the ball hit, and it goes into the end zone. So it turned out to be the right choice, and Union will start at its own 20-yard line. We have a timeout, 14-23 remaining in the football game. Dayton 17, Union 7. There is a shot of some Dayton supporters. I wasn't real sure what that was, to tell you the truth, we came up with that. 14-23 remaining, Union takes over. Mason stood straight up on a fine defensive play by Lockhart, and he has been, without question, the defensive standout for Dayton. Lockhart, 5'11", 210, sort of typical, I think, of the size of the Dayton players. Out of Cleveland, Ohio. They say he's only 190 pounds and he's hitting 230 right there. But the key is on these big guys is get him behind the line before they get the momentum. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Russ straight back this time. Throws over the middle. DiLoretto makes the catch at the 29-yard line. It'll be short of the first down unless he gets a very generous spot. Got a good spot, but not a generous spot. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's right. real close to the 30, but since the ball went in the end zone, they got to get to the line. So the third down, less than a yard. They have to make a first down. They really have to. They go with the wish ball, and they give it to Mason. And Mason has it to the 37-yard line. Well, they've done a good job of penetration, which takes away the real forte of the big back, which is piling up that momentum. I know when... I played a big back like a Larry Zonka or somebody like that. Boy, if he got downfield and you saw him coming, you just better duck and hope he trips over you. One setback, they've been Callahan in motion. Russ straight back again. Here comes the rush. Over the middle, the ball is caught this time by Callahan, and Callahan is knocked out of bounds. The ball bouncing backward after the after the hit to about the 39-yard line, so he lost a couple of yards on that. The end result of it is a gain of about six. This is one of the plays that was effective for him earlier. They let the tight end. They've been going the tight end, going the tight end. This time, they clear out with the tight end. <laughs> Excuse me. And then he crosses underneath. Watch the ball pop out. Nobody even touches him right here. He just pops out of his hands, but luckily he was close enough to the sideline. Russ straight back again. Four-man rush this time over the middle. Caught by Di Loretto at midfield. First down, Union. Well, Di Loretto caught 10 passes last week, and he's approaching that number again this week. Yeah, he's really come on big, and he's shown the ability to get open. This time, he avoids the contact, but he runs away from the linebacker and gets the first down. He's been tough. Nine catches now, 72 yards. Here's the rush again. Russ Waits throws to Di Loretto at the 45-yard line, flag down. And I think this one's going to come back. It would have been Di Loretto's 10th catch, but instead it's going to cost him 10 yards. Finally getting some momentum, and then they make the big mistake. That's been the story of their football game today. They get the turnover and they throw the interception. The big mistake right back in the hands of Dayton. Dayton getting a pretty good push up front, too. Dayton's doing a good job, but anytime the Union gets something going, they almost self destruct with the things that they're doing. A lot of holding penalties. Those holding penalties oftentimes are a result of the fact that the defensive line is getting there. 69 or 65? I thought he said five. So it'll be first down and 20. Six penalties for 55 yards against Union, and almost all of them the holding variety. Russ straight back. Four-man rush. Flag is down again. Pass is incomplete, intended for Walker. And I think this might be another one. This is a strange one. They're pointing now towards... Dayton. I wonder what they were calling because the two linemen were really away from the whole action. Face mask is the call. Now it's been five or 15. Did he pull on it or he just incidentally hit it? Now defensive linemen will do this on stunts. They'll try to grab an offensive lineman to try to free up their buddy. See right there, 74, pulls on the face mask. That's Ooh, one. That's a big one, too. I'm not sure that was the one that they called, though, because that was more incidental. 
It looked like it was the middle of the line of scrimmage that the two linemen were just standing there. They had been breezed by because of the cold pace. Well, that's a big break for Union. They were looking at a first and 20. Now they get to try it again, first and five. Rush straight back, four-man rush. Throws for DiLoretto, makes the catch the 38-yard line. That wasn't an easy catch. They did a good job of pushing off, and you see right now Randy Robinson complaining about the push-off. He's right to complain about it, but if they aren't calling it, you got to overcome it. Watch right here. That's a push right there off of it. Not nearly as bad as before. When you see the man coming at tight end, what you do is you let him go by and you step in front of him so he can go either way with it. Russ again to put it up. Stunt over the middle. The ball is caught by Callahan. And Callahan has stopped as he got across the 35-yard line. Only going to be a gain of about three yards. And they had to do that to give DiLoretto a break. <laughs> he just goes down and really blocks the linebacker so he can come in the outside man can come short in that zone. About ten passes has DiLoretto. Callahan's got a few catches today, too. Yeah, he's got the, I think he's got the linebackers frozen now. Russ again will put it up. Throws over the middle again. Again, it's caught by DiLoretto. Almost an instant replay and another first down. Well, Dayton changed up. They went to man-to-man -man defense to put a defensive back on him. Watch Cuthbert take him this time, number 33. But he gets away from him, too, and there's a throw and a nice catch. Cuthbert much closer, though, on knocking the football down than the linebackers have been. So Union started to get it done by way of the pass of DiLoretto has been the man who has done it, but that's almost redundant. It's been like that all year long. This time they give it to Felipe, or Telemark, I beg your pardon, and he gets inside the 20, down to about the 18-yard line. And that play has been shut off, but when you get the linebackers frozen, thinking about DiLoretto every time, they don't react nearly as quick to the run. So the passing game is now set up to run. Watch the linebackers. They're back off. They're waiting to see what's going to happen. You see number 48, Randy Robinson? He never got off his, uh, never got his feet moving forward. On second down, Russ throws almost intercepted by Robinson. That time he threw into a lot of coverage. <laughs> De Loretto was claiming he was held, and he was, but for a guy that's been pushed off all day, he, he has little room to complain. Watch number 73, Doug Ryan right there. Grab him. Well, that's not too bad after the way he's been pushing off. There's nothing he can even complain about. He didn't grab his jersey. That broke a string of six completions in a row. By Russ, and he fumbles this one, now picks it up, hands it off to Telemach, and Telemach will be close to the first down. Robert Christie playing on the nose now for the injured Bob Leonard, just a freshman from Akron, made the tackle, and let's see if he did get enough. Going to be short. It's a good job, Greg! And it's going to be fourth down. And inches. And they'll go to their wishbone where they were breaking some big plays. We'll be interesting to see if uh, Dayton goes to their 6-5, their almost goal line defense, because that they do. That means if he breaks through, there's a lot of room behind with no secondary. Mason gets the call, and he's going to be close. I don't know. This is going to depend purely on the spot. Union says yes, Dayton says no. I think they're biased. We'll see where the mark is. He was hit. He couldn't have got much. The two coaches looking on with anticipation. I think it's probably the right word to use there. Well, I'll tell you what, from where we can see and we can line up the yard markers, it's going to be real close. We're not going to be able to see it because of the player's interest. First down. And not with anything to spare. interesting to see how close that was. Would that take the uh, credit card treatment? I think it might have. <laughs> Slide it down the pole. Did the nose get to it? Well, by however much, it is a first down at the 17-yard line. Russ rolling this time. Throws, and it is batted away nicely. And very lucky that uh, 
Sean Canelli again didn't come up with a big play because he had cut beautifully in front of the uh, intended receiver and the ball had been thrown correctly. He'd have been down the sideline. Telemach was the intended receiver, but you're right, that was six the other way. You see it again. He saw the close to the interception. Watch this time. Watch the cut in front. Whoa, I think that was very close. That was a nice play, nice break defensively. Second and ten. Here comes a blitz. It's picked up though. Russ throws, but throws too tall. And intended for Diego Leto, who says it was my fault. He did come with a blitz. Canelli again, a good job on coverage on DiLoretto. But it was not a very good throw by Russ. Russ has done a good job though. He's thrown a lot of balls over the middle and put it right on the mark for DiLoretto. Those are dangerous throws because it just takes one little slight miscue with the ball and it's an interception. So a very big play here. And Union cannot afford a sack because you got to start thinking field goal. Russ throws. The ball is caught this time by Felipe. And Felipe gets it down to about the 13 yard line. It's going to be well short of the first down. Tackle again by Sean Canelli, who's had a big day defensively for Dayton. And so Union will have to settle for the three. Now they're going to have to kick the field goal if they can. This is a backup quarterback who was not the kicker at all, hadn't kicked since high school. In fact, was a soccer kicker in high school that switched to straight ahead because he couldn't get the ball high enough from his soccer stock. So this is not a gimme. This has been a part of Al Bagnoli's game that he has not been real pleased with. Goodwin gets it up and hooks it. It is no good off to the right. And so much ado about not very much as it turns out. 8.51 remaining in the football game and Dayton continues to lead by 10. Well, I don't know, Stan. It looks like he never quite got his steps right. Well, he didn't get it right. He knows he missed, but watch Brett Russ right here. He's not real happy. That's an emotional killer. You go that long and get no points out of it. Five minutes and 42 seconds, and you come up empty. A little trouble handling that handoff on first down, but Hoffaker managed to hold on to it and get it upfield for a couple of yards. You could just see the shoulders drop on the sideline when that ball did not go through the uprights. He's only made 42% of his kicks this year. It's been a big problem. That was one of the big advantages that Dayton had was in the kicking game. They had an All-American kicker against a kid that was thrust into that job, not of his own choice. And in fact, that's what Mike Kelly said when we talked to him last night. He said, we have one star, and it's our kicker. Give this time to Hoffaker again, and Hoffaker gets a couple more short of the 25-yard line. Yeah, Goodwin, Scott Goodwin, I know he feels terrible about that, but you know he's, he's not a kicker. He just was forced to do the job. I guess the Union bench were protecting their own. That's expected. Third down and five now. And a little confusion at the line of scrimmage, and let's see. They want to drive football. Right. Remember they fumbled on third down, trying to run the option the last time? Think I was that. center, I would say, yeah, it was a wet football. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Certainly could have been me. Third down, it's a long five. But the clock now really becoming a factor in this game so far as Union's concerned. Here's the pitch off the option this time. And it's DeWitt trying to get as much as he can, but that's not very much. He's turned around and knocked down by Eric Tryon. Well, the fact that they were going to run that, and the coaches had seen that on the fumble staff before, they come out in the same formation against the same defense. Obviously, Union was uh, well aware of that possibility, that potential. Well, Union will get it back. And while the clock is not really a factor in the game yet, it will soon become so. Pretty good punt this time. Drives Giamo all the way back to 22 yard line. Starts the other way, fakes the reverse to Tolman, slips by one man, got it back to 22 yard line. I think that's what they might have had in mind the first time when Giamo couldn't come up with the football. 644 remaining in the game. Union with the ball, trailing by 10. We'll be back. Barry Tompkins with Stan White. We are back 
in Phoenix City, Alabama. This the Division Three football championship, and right now Dayton has it in control. They lead Union 17 to seven. They come out in a nickel defense to start things. Union will have to put it up, does so. That is no good. Ern makes the grab out of bounds. Petrucci defending. You know, Barry, we're at 17 to seven between these two teams, but. You look at what these guys have done all year long, and you would never uh, expect it to, to be such a low-scoring game. He had 36 points a game for Dayton, 32 for Union. This tells you how good these defenses are, and they really have, may not have been tested by teams like this before. Second down and 10 now. Union running out of time and running out of downs. Russ has to roll away from pressure, throws against the grain for a Hearn. And did he get it? Yes, he did at the 31 yard line. The people may have been questioning that previous play because he caught the ball and was knocked out of bounds. But in college football, you have to come down with one foot in. Defensively, it is quite legal to knock him out of bounds to force an incompletion. Nice little catch this time by Ahern on the sideline. Stayed with it. Third down and two. So they got to worry first down first, and they might have gotten it with that second effort. They might have gotten it with the uh, little scruff of the football on the ground. He really was about a half a yard back, but they give him a good spot. It was Lombardoni who made the first down, and so now Union can concentrate on putting the ball upfield, which they're going to have to do at some point. Yeah, Dayton has gone to a man-to-man -man coverage against their wide open. They're playing man under, everybody playing man, and then playing zone behind. 57 left. Russ straight back. Three man rush this time. Airs it out deep. And could have made a case for a flag on that play, but there was none. So Telemont will just. I think Husted had good position, Barry. It's almost like basketball. He, had, he was in that line of flight, and Telemont ran into him. Call it charging. That's right. <laughs> you can see the ball. See, Telemont runs into him. You're right. And it would uh, good position defensively. Second down now. Three man rush again. Russ steps up, throws underneath for Walker, can't hang on. Now there's been no signal yet. They may call out a fumble. No, I didn't think it was. Now, anything close, they're going to call an incompletion. And it was an incompletion. He never really had the ball. That really wasn't close. The outside official. For some reason, did not make a call. He should have immediately called an incompletion. Robinson stuck in pretty good. Watch 48. Gerald Walker, one of their better receivers, out of the backfield. The ball is wobbling. You see, never has the football. It's completely bobbled. The outside man right there, you see in the screen, does not make any call. He's a man that the best position should have called right away. Third down and ten now. And once again, Union getting into a situation where they're just going to have to keep the football over the middle, bat it away. And a flag is down also. And that almost certainly is going to be a hold. And almost certainly will be refused. That's what it is. Now Dayton that time double teamed De Loretto. They put a linebacker and a defensive back on him and took him completely out of the play. And he was the, he was the primary receiver. Dayton right now is taking this game by the throat. It is holding and it is declined and it's going to be fourth down and ten and Union getting to the last hurrah time. See right here watch it outside and then inside two men cover and he still almost broke open. So Union has to go on fourth down here the ball at the thirty four yard line. They need ten. Three man rush. Russ with time. Throws. Comebacker. Ahern. First down at midfield. Nice move by Ahern, but one that really Husted should not have bought. We talked about his lack of speed. There's no way you should get turned upfield and not play underneath him. Watch how wide open he is. He fakes up and then comes back on a comeback. Husted is completely fooled on the man to man coverage. So they make the big first down and they keep things alive here just across midfield. Russ again with time underneath for De Loretto and they are really starting to defense De Loretto very well. Mocho and Robinson 
both there. Yeah, watch how far he's going to have to come back. Again, there's one man coverage. He goes underneath him. See how far he has to come back? You're going to give him those four and five yard patterns in this situation. And the clock continues to tick down. Five minutes left. Russ this time throws and a flag down. Now that was interference that time on Petrucci, who held Callahan but on the, his way to the football. Well, if it's holding, I agree. But if it's interference, I disagree because the ball had no chance of being caught. It was completely thrown out of bounds. Holding does not is not eliminated. They're calling interference, but I would disagree with that because the ball was completely thrown away. They caught their feet up, and uh, there's no way that was a catchable ball. So it will be another first down at the 36-yard line. That's my, that was Mike. Uh, Kelly signaling the defense, double fist, probably man to man coverage. That's what it is. They line up to take everybody with two deep safeties. They just don't want to give up the big play here. Remember, they still have to score twice, this time on a draw play for Telemac, and Telemac gets it inside the 30 down the 27 yard line. Gain of about eight. Nice little variation that time by Union. Mocho made the stop. It's going to be a little short of the first down, I think. And a holding penalty going against Dayton. Now what do you do? Do you take the holding penalty, which is five yards and a first down? Or do you take the play, which is eight yards and second and two? And it's this man, Al Bagnoli, who will have to make that decision. Nice little move here in and out right there. Never did get the complete... Uh, momentum going but he did enough jitterbugging to get the first down the holding was downfield on one of the receivers yeah you're right so it appears they're going to tack that on the end of that no play. that's not a tackle they cannot tack that on the special rages amongst the zebras and even though you can't tack it on they are going to tack it on <laughs> they shouldn't tack it on Unless they're calling it a personal foul. I guess they are. So that's going to put it down at the 16 yard line. Well, we've had a few strange calls here. Yeah. On fumbles and penalties and tack ons. And How big does that missed field goal a few moments ago look now? Callahan in motion. It's coming. Everybody comes. Six men, seven men. And he unloads quickly to Callahan, catchable ball, and there's a case of footsteps, perhaps. Well, it was a catchable ball, but if he'd have thrown it out in front of him with the blitz and the pick, it might have been six points. Ryan and Rastetter were both coming on the blitz. Twenty-one of thirty-six, one hundred sixty-nine yards. The numbers on Russ, two interceptions. Only thrown twelve in the first half, too. Here comes everybody again on the blitz, and they pick it up again. And the throw is into traffic. Ahern can't hang on. He had to unload that football as they have come twice in a row with a blitz. Christie and Ryan coming that time. Big third down play, but obviously. They need two scores, and I don't think they'll try a field goal again at this point. No. Although he is down warming up. Scott Goodwin. Shotgun. Blitz comes again. And he throws it for the end zone for a hurt. Jump ball batted away nicely in the end zone by John Huston. Well, he went to the shotgun because of the blitzing. That way he can set up and not have to throw going backwards as he had the last two times. That time it was Robinson coming on the blitz. Actually, Union has managed to pick the blitz up relatively well, at least to give Brett Russ, Brett Russ enough time to unload the football. And this is just a jump ball, and Ahern almost comes up with a catch right there. It's one of those that if he could have just got his other hand on it, he would have kept in. They are going to try the field goal. It'll be a 33-yard effort. You saw those numbers, only 3 of 13 for Goodwin between the 30 and the 39 yard line. And this one is on its way. Will it be long enough? No, short. And again, a very unhappy man on the sideline is Brett Russ. 
Not to mention Mario De Loretto, who had thrown his helmet down in the middle of the field. So we'll take a timeout. 414 remaining. Dayton in control. They lead by 10. Four minutes, 14 seconds remaining in this Division Three championship game, and the Dayton Flyers seemingly have things in control. It has not gone the way of Brett Russ. His numbers aren't bad, but he's been unable to punch it into the end zone since the very first drive of the football game. Dayton, meanwhile, hasn't made a first down in the fourth and final period. Union's made eight, but Dayton leads by 10. Putting the ball downfield, intended for Bob Keller that time, was Dan Charlie. Charlie, who wound up at Dayton from Memphis, Tennessee. Bit of a commute. Well, some people may be surprised to see Dayton putting the ball up in the air at this point, but this is the time when the defense starts gambling. And you know they're going to stuff you at the line, so try to loosen them up and maybe come up with a big play off of a safe bootleg pass, see if there's anything close they throw it away. And if you're going to do it, do it on first down. Your confidence in your quarterback. Second and ten. A little mishandling of the snap from center, but again, the give to Alexander, and Alexander straight ahead for a couple. Well, the rains have held off, and the field, for the most part, has held up today. We really, yesterday, anticipated a sloppy, muddy field, but uh, that has not really been in play today. It's been, uh, a fair, fair situation for each team. I'll tell you, next week we're going to see a field that drains better than any field I've ever seen. The one at Statesboro, Georgia Southern. Charlie will put it up. Over the middle, it is intercepted. So there's exactly a case of what we were talking about. Bill Smith comes up with the interception, another fumble. I think Union finally did get it. Smith, of course, intercepted one last week and ran in for a touchdown. And may saw it at the top of our show. A middle guard, we've had each middle guard today come up with an interception. So how many games have we ever seen where the two middle guards have an interception? Not often. Oh, it's, just not, it's just a short throw, and, and Smith never got off the line of scrimmage. He's still being blocked as he catches the football. Now, he fumbles right there, and often. Dayton almost comes up with the, with the uh, recovery, and then he got the ball back. Is that what happened? So Union with yet another chance. Here's a late blitz coming. Russ unloads over the middle. Ball's caught by the tight end. Nice play that time by Russ to keep his composure and hang in there. And De Loretto again getting double coverage and being able to get away from both, both of the uh, defenders. Still not out of the question for Union. Three minutes left. This time the throw is incomplete through behind Gerald Walker, the intended receiver. But it does stop the clock and it gives Union a minute to think about things. Or 25 seconds. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Figuratively a minute. <laughs> Ball at the 18 yard line, that's not really important. Nor is down the distance. They gotta get into the end zone. Here comes a blitz, picked up, and the ball is thrown behind De Loretto, the intended receiver. Tough throw that time by Russ. Both of the last two throws have been behind the receivers. Fourth down now. Both linebackers, Mocho and Robinson, were coming that time. Hey, Dayton is really, once they got down here in the fourth quarter, they just said uh, they're not covering real, real well. Uh, they're going down the field. If they drop back, so let's just blitz them. Force them to throw quick. That's what we're working for. Union has called a timeout. De Loretto had said only 13 catches, 101 yards so far, but it seems to be on a losing note. They leads Union 17 to 7. Two minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the game. We'll be back. Well, this time I mean it. This is the last hurrah for Union. 2.45 left. They're looking at a fourth and two, and it's a long two. They got to think first down. They had a chance at a free play there. They had a man in the neutral zone. Here comes the blitz. Russ throws incomplete. Dayton will take over. No flags. There was a case, I would think, Stan, or you played the game and I didn't, but the center should snap the ball when he sees the man in there, should he not? <laughs> well, coaches have different philosophies on that. Some of them don't want him to because they bounce back. Let's watch back Morley, the coach of the Union. He's just saying that's it. Of course, Mike Kelly, I'm sure, is going to be a little happier as he must anticipate the national championship with this being 
Well, I don't know. He didn't look any happier than me. But I was just going to say, he doesn't look like a coach who thinks he's got in the back quite yet. Coaches never think that. They never happen. Until it's over. And now they can use the clock. Hoffaker doesn't get much, but it almost doesn't matter. 235 left. Union still has a couple of timeouts to burn here. I know that was a big play because as a player, you never feel comfortable when there's only a 10 point there. I don't care how much time is left because you've seen it happen. You've seen onside kicks, you've seen fumbles, and who would expect the middle guard to intercept a pass? When the weird things started happening, you start saying, hey, let's get this thing over with quick. <laughs> Offense is 65 yards, and they've been tough yards on the ground. He gets it again, gets about five more, maybe six more across the 25 to 26 yard line. And now Union wants a timeout. And they will take it with 153 remaining in the game. They'll have one left. So they may get a chance to get their hands on the football once again, but almost seems that there's very little they can do. And Mike Kelly on the verge of winning the national championship here. In 1980, the Dayton Flyers won it. They came in here and beat Ithaca 63 to nothing. And then they had some problems. They lost to Widener and they lost to Wagner. We were talking to him last night. He said, your problem is you have to not play teams with a W. And he said, well, we're playing one with a U and that's close enough. Too close for cover. That's right. okay. The coaches are never happy. I think I'd be happy right now if I was uh, any member of uh, the contingent from Dayton. So Dayton now looking at a third down and a long two. And if they make a first down, it is over. And if they don't make a first down, it's still probably over. And they give it to Alexander trying to get outside, and he won't do it. And so Union will get yet another stab here. Bob Anderson was the man who kept Alexander from picking up that first down. And Cameron will come on to do the punting. Either one of those field goals, as Union uses another timeout, would have uh, really made this interesting at this point if either of them had made it through the uprights. One score, very possible at this point. Two, improbable. Cameron will punt, and Union comes after this one. They don't get it. Union is out of timeouts, we're told. Giamo at the 30-yard line. He is surrounded. And down at the 33. I know one reason Mike Kelly wasn't quite happy. The snapper on the Dayton's team is a kid that never snapped before this year. The Giacomo, Pat Giacomo, their tackle, was their snapper. He got hurt and hasn't been able to do it. This is a kid they just found out practicing one day, doing it, and he ended up being a regular snapper. Jamie Wolf is his name. Never did it before he came to Dayton. So Russ now with 135 left in the football game just airs it out deep for Callahan and it's intercepted and that's just the final nail in the coffin as John Huston comes up with the interception for Dayton. There was nothing much Russ could do about it. He had to go for the downs and he threw a floater up there that Callahan never did get close to and Huston picks off. And so Dayton is going to be the Division Three champions once again. Tough afternoon for Union. Great day for the Flyers. Yeah, they are number one. That's one time you can say we're number one and you mean it. There is a playoff, isn't there, at this division? Although one division in, the, in our land does not have a playoff. That's true, but probably should. <laughs> Will we ever see that? Oh, I think so. I think so. Hoffaker again, as now it's just a question of running the clock out. Scott Garcia. And there will be joy in Dayton. Where's and they really do, su do such a good job of putting these playoffs on the NCAA in Division II, in Division III, Division I, AA. It just seems difficult to believe, but they couldn't somehow incorporate the structure they have now to do the same in Division I. So, you know, this year, if Notre Dame beats Colorado, there's not going to be any clear cut number one. Charlie will only have to take about two more steps. Gives it off to Hoffaker. snap it one more time. Well, both these teams very well coached. Both certainly deserve to be here. Both undefeated coming into this game. 
And the frightening thing for just about every other school in Division Three football is that both these teams have almost everybody coming back. And that will be that. Dayton is the Division Three college football champions for 1989. And it is well earned. Bookends of the 80s, you could say. 80 and 89. To begin the 80s and the end of the 80s, Dayton is a national champion. Credit to both coaches. Mike Kelly, first time we've seen him smile. Even when we talked to him last night, it was a little hard to get a smile out of him. Well, we saw him smiling after the uh, game last week that enabled them to be part of this uh, great championship. Going for all the marbles. Well, his marble bag is full now. 17 to 7, the Dayton Flyers win it, and I don't think you have to guess at what the result was for those two. Yeah, you may talk about bigger, faster, stronger. There's no more disappointment or no more uh, exhilaration than what both of these benches have. It would be at any level. At this point, I'm sure for Union, it's hard to look back on a season and say, what a great year. But, you know, this team come, came off two straight 500 seasons, and all of a sudden to go 13 and 1, not exactly chopped liver. Both these teams start the same 22 today that they started the first game of the season. One of the reasons they were both here, and uh, I think both schools, both coaches, uh, deserve uh, all our congratulations about the great year. Well, the end of today's game, and once more, the final score, Dayton 17, Union 7.